day and welcome to making. This tutorial was prompted by a request from Universa and Una Kasha. Hopefully this does the trick. So what's involved? When a star converts all its hydrogen and helium into heavier elements, if that star is big enough, then there's a tipping point where the gravitational attraction is stronger than the energetic particle's velocity and the mass collapses in on itself, which releases all the energy in a massive blast. The first widely known supernova was 1987A, but before researching this topic I thought the term supernova was coined to describe it, but it's way more interesting than that. Supernova light up the sky in an initial burst which can last months, so they've been observed throughout antiquity. HB9, possibly the earliest observed supernova, was recorded in a rock carving in the Bozama region of Kashmir dated around 1500 BC. Chinese astronomers observed SN185 in 185 AD, and the supernova which created the Crab Nebula occurred in 1054 AD. But it wasn't until 1933 that Swedish astronomer Nutt Lundmark coined the term supernova. All very cool stuff, but let's jump into After Effects and make our own cinematic version. First off, we need a star, and I'm going to use my existing sun tutorial. If you don't have that sun, then pause this video, go watch that, and I'll be here when you get back. Hey, you're back! All we have to do to modify this is turn off VC Color Vibrance from the Sun Orb layer. We'll add that back on elsewhere. Select Sun Null and tap S to expose the scale keyframes. Expand the orb effect and double click on the radius to make it visible in the timeline. Now use the expression Pick Whip to link the radius to the null scale and then edit the expression to add times 4 to the end. Keyframe the null scale from 100 to 0 in the time of your choosing. I went 1 second into the comp and had it collapse to nothing by the 7 second point. With both keyframes selected, right click and choose Easy Ease to make the collapse less linear. Here's a neat trick, when you've done that make sure no layers are selected and click on the asterisk key on the keypad. This adds a marker to the comp which will be visible after the next steps. To make life nice and easy and because it's barely on screen, I've turned off the particle flares layer. Next, take the My Sun comp and drag it onto the new comp button. Go to composition, composition settings and increase the comp duration to a minute. And did you spot our comp marker is now a layer marker, which we can use to drive the light burst. But before we do that, all we've got right now is the sun shrinking. It's probably scientifically accurate, but it feels underwhelming. And this is a chance to show you a really cool and underused effect. First, go to layer, new, solid. Make it comp sized and click OK. Hit enter and rename it to time displacement text. And then go to effect, Noise and Grain, Turbulent Noise. Set the type to Max. Invert it. Set the contrast to 150 and the brightness to 50 and set a keyframe. Expand Transform and keyframe the scale from 200 at 0 seconds to 2 at the layer marker. You know, 7 seconds. Back on Brightness, set a new keyframe to minus 65 and keyframe the evolution to do about three rotations in the seven seconds. And you can go ahead and trim the layer to match the length of the sun comp using alt and right square bracket. Then padlock the text layer and turn it off. Back on the my sun layer, go to effect, time, time displacement. This effect moves eclipse speed at different times based on a displacement map, so you can create really weird stretching animations. Set the layer to our text layer, and set the source drop down to effects and masks. Set a keyframe for the displacement to 1.5 at 0 seconds, and another at 7 seconds to 0. When I preview this now, what we get is different parts of the star collapsing faster than other parts, which feels more natural and more like an explosion in reverse. And now add back our VC Vibrance effect with a nice orange. Okay, now make the layer 3D and then go to layer, 
Transform, Auto Orient, and choose Orient Towards Camera. I made the opening shot 3D, but to be honest, if you're not planning to pan around, you can ignore adding a camera. Either way though, I think we'll need a center for everything. So go to Layer, New, Null Object. Make it 3D and make sure it's named Null 1. Parent the Suncom to it, and you can turn the sun off for now. Create a new black solid, name it Flare, and then if you have a third party lens flare effect, you'll want to use that. But if not, go to Layer, Generate, Lens Flare. Pick whip the Flare Center property to the Null 1 layer. Then expand the Expressions area and add dot two comp brackets square brackets zero comma zero comma zero close square brackets close brackets. This links the 2D flare to our 3D null. Set the layers transfer mode to screen and then keyframe the flare brightness from 0% just before the 7 second mark to 200% 2 seconds later. I also prefer the 105mm prime for the lens flare. And to fade out this flash, tap T to expose the opacity property. Set a keyframe at the same time as the maximum value of the flare, and about 10 seconds later set it to zero. Right click on the first keyframe, and choose Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease Out. Alright, two elements down, two to go. Unless you count the Starfield background, but then you should just check out my 360 Starfield tutorial, which shows you how to make a preset. And while you're doing that, you know the like button? Was that too subtle? How about this? Hey guys, super excited to share my new toot. Please give the like button a boop, hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, check me out on TikTok, follow me on Insta, buy my Bitcoin. And yes, I have three children's books coming out soon, so pre-order those. I feel grubby. Create a new solid, and <sighs> there's no easy way to do this. If you haven't seen my tutorial on linking CC Particle World to a 3D null, you need to go follow that and get that preset. You could use Trapco Particular, but I've just done five fucking tutorials on both effects types, and I can't face doing another one. Create a new solid, add the CC Particle World preset, which links the effect to our null one layer. Solo it for the moment, and drag the layer to start at the point of maximum flare and set a keyframe for birth rate to 50. Jump to about 23 seconds and set one to zero. Set the longevity to 100. In physics, set keyframes for the velocity at the start of the layer to one and have this drop down to zero at the same time the birth rate does. Set gravity to zero and set resistance to four. Resistance will be our equivalent of a gravitational field. Now, it's all a little too perfect. So change the type from explosive to fractal omni. And play with the extra angle which controls the fractal omni's noise pattern to get a shape you like. In particle, CC Particle World starts off using line as the particle type, but these don't show up without movement, so we need to change this to faded sphere. Drop the sizes to 0.03. Set the size variation to 100%. Expand opacity map and using the select tool, fill in the right hand side. Now to set our colors. For the birth color, start with a strong blue. Then a couple of seconds in, change this to green. About a second later, yellow. and a second after that, red. I think stronger differentiation between the colors would look better, so highlight all the keyframes, right click and choose Toggle Hold Keyframe. Finally for this layer, set the transfer mode to screen. It's all a little 1980s right now, Let's soften it by duplicating the particle layer. Drop the birth rate from 50 to 10. 
In particle, up the sizes to 0 0.5. But drop the opacity to 10%. Set the transfer mode to composite. And drop the layer below the smaller particles. On the smaller particles opacity map, now fill in the left hand side. Previewing that. And I think we could use a bit of artistic license here and drag the particle layers further forward in time so that we can see them spewing out. Okay, almost done. Another new solid. Call it Fractal Tex and add Turbulent Noise. Set the type to dynamic, the contrast to 200, and keyframe the brightness. Minus 30 at the start of the layer, which should be around the point of maximum flareness. And at around 23 seconds, set it to minus 130. In transform, drop the scale to 50, and keyframe the evolution to go wild, about six revolutions in the time from the start of the layer to the second brightness keyframe. Normally I'd use time times 100 for the evolution, but anonymous gamer broed that they found scripting hard. And I can't ignore a bro. Go to effect, keying, extract. Set the black point to 100 and the black feather to 80. You can turn this layer off now and padlock it. Add another new layer And this time, add the effect, Video Copilot, Orb. Use a pick whip to link Orb's center to the null's position. And keyframe the radius to expand to match the particles. Just by eye, whatever looks good. In Material, Expand advanced options and check unlit only. Then in maps, set our fractal text layer for diffuse with effects and masks. Add CC radial blur from effects, blur and sharpen. Set the type to straight zoom and the amount to 50. Add turbulent displace. Set the amount to 150 and keyframe the scale from 5 to 40 over the same time as everything else. Set the complexity to 3, and keyframe the evolution. Go to Effect, Color Correction, Tritone, and set the midpoint to a nice strong blue. Then add a Glow Effect, which you'll find in Stylize. Up the threshold to 95%, the radius to 100, but drop the intensity down to 0.2. And you're done! When you combine it with a smooth camera move and a 3D star field, you'll get this.